What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video. Step into the arena, pull out a chair and make yourselves at home. Now in today's video, we're gonna be going over task five and task six. So before I start the conversation, please take a look at the whiteboard and copy the note taking diagram that you see. P stands for person, so you're gonna write down the person who has a problem. BC means because, so over here, you're gonna be summarizing the problem. The S's stand for solution one and two. The circles are for the upsides, the positive aspects of the solutions, and the X's are for the downsides, the negative aspects. Yeah. Now, as I've said before, the first solution's negative aspect is going to be a huge hint. If the negative aspect for the first solution is very serious, you're going to pick the second solution, probably. Um, whereas, if the negative aspect of the first, first solution is pretty playful, you might be inclined to pick the first solution because it's not so serious. All right, now here's the conversation. Listen to a conversation and take notes. Jane, I've got a problem, and I was hoping you could give me some advice. Sure, go ahead. You know, I've got that big biology test in two hours, right? Well, unfortunately, my car broke down yesterday while I was driving, so by the time I got it fixed, I had to go to bed and couldn't study for it. That doesn't sound good. So what are you going to do? Well, I could simply take the makeup exam later this week. Then I could study more. The professor is permitting all the students who went on the field trip on Sunday to take the test this Friday. That sounds good. Go for it. But I, uh, didn't go on the field trip. So I'm not sure if Professor Taylor will allow me to take the test late. Okay, that's not good. Well, why don't you just take the test today? You've attended every class, so you should be familiar with the material. That's true, but I really need an A in this class. If I don't get one, I might not make the Dean's List this semester. That's what I'm shooting for. Well, you'd better do something fast. Alright. Now, I'm gonna pick the second solution. Because... Because the downside of the first solution is really serious. The man didn't go on the field trip, and he's not sure if the professor will allow him to take the makeup exam. This is crazy. If he chooses the first solution, he's... He has way too much guts. Yeah, don't pick this. We're going to pick the second solution. And I wrote grades over here as soon as I heard the problem because it's about a test, and he couldn't study for it. So this problem has a direct impact on his grades. Um, now let's organize the details. The man has a problem because he has a biology test in two hours but could not study for it. The first solution is taking the makeup exam and the second solution is taking the test today. We're not gonna need this. The upside of our first solution is, or the upside of our solution is, the man should be familiar with the test materials. The man should be familiar with the test materials. Now the downside of the first solution is, as I said, he didn't go on the field trip and is not sure if the professor will allow him to take the makeup exam. Now the downside of our solution is the man really wants to make the dean's list this year. The dean's list is like first honors in high school. It's a list that students who maintained a really good GPA are mentioned in, okay? All right, now that we know what I'm gonna say for my sample response, let's listen to what I've gotta say. If it's possible for any of you guys to lip sync along with my sample response, please try it out. But if you're a first time viewer, um, go back to my channel, hit the playlist tab, and watch the first few Task 5 videos that I uploaded. The man is in between a rock and a hard place because he has a biology test in two hours but could not study for it. Fortunately, he can choose from two possible solutions, which are taking the makeup exam or just taking the test today. If I were in the man's shoes, I would personally prefer the second solution. To start with, this solution would be much better for his issue at hand because the man should already be familiar with the test materials. On the other hand, since he did not go on the field trip and is not sure if the professor will even allow him to take the makeup exam, it would be impractical to choose the other possible solution. Although the man really wants to make the dean's list this year, taking the test today would still be better because Grades are obviously very crucial for university students, as they can affect their future positively or negatively. Needless to say, from where I stand, 
the second solution is the much better choice for these reasons. All right, so clearly in this situation, um, the downside of the first solution that he's going to get a zero, an F on this test, it's likely since he didn't go on the field trip. Now, the downside of the second solution is that he might not get an A plus because he had something unfortunate happen to him last night. Obviously, picking the second solution leads to the higher grade, which is why we're able to say this for this response. All right, now let's move on to task six. Listen to a lecture and take notes. Have you ever considered how much thought goes into the item display process at various stores? Quite a lot, to tell the truth. Stores are always interested in the impressions they make on their customers, so they try to display all of their products according to what various research and studies tell them. One such example of this is the fact that many stores display their most expensive items in the front. They either do that or they display their expensive items more prominently on shelves. What is the purpose of this? It's simple, really. Many people associate high costs with quality. So when they look into a store and notice the high prices of its products, they immediately associate that store with quality products. This in turn helps to bolster the company's image with its customers. Pretty ingenious, huh? So, what about the cheaper products? Companies typically put them in harder to find places for a couple of reasons. The first is that they don't, as a general rule, want to be associated with low prices, which often symbolize low quality to many shoppers. The second reason is actually somewhat more interesting. Many people love shopping for bargains. So when a shopper has to look around a bit to find a cheaper product, he feels more of a sense of achievement than he would have had the item been right in front of him. In his mind, he worked hard to find that lower priced item. And according to studies, he's more likely to purchase the product that he looked so hard for. All right. Now, once again, since this was a lecture, I'm going to bring you guys a little bit closer so we can take a really good look at what I took notes on. All right, here it is. So the beginning sentence is, the professor gave a lecture about how stores display their products. Now, in the first section I wrote down, display expensive items in front or on shelves because people associate high costs with quality. So helps to bolster image with customers. Bolster means improve. And the, uh, the way you use the word associate is either associate something with another thing or be associated with something, all right? Okay, now let's look at the second section. Typically put cheaper products in harder to find places because not be associated with low quality. And love shopping for bargains, so more likely to purchase something when find something. Bargains, if you don't know, mean good deal. All right, good deals. So love shopping for bargains means love shopping for good deals. Love looking for cheap goods. All right, now that we know what we're gonna say or what I'm gonna say, let's listen to my sample response. The professor gave a lecture about how stores display their products. To begin with, most stores display their expensive items in the front or on the shelves, mainly because a lot of people associate high costs with high quality. In other words, this method actually helps to bolster a store's image with its customers. Furthermore, the majority of stores typically put cheaper products in harder to find places, simply due to the fact that they do not want to be associated with low quality. In addition to this, lots of consumers love shopping for bargains, so, it's more likely for them to purchase the cheaper products when they find them. In summation, this was how stores display their products, which was illustrated by expensive items and cheaper products, given by the professor in the lecture. All right, now let's count how many sentences I organized from this lecture. One, it's long, but one, two, three and four okay so once again four pretty extensive and lengthy sentences so let's say that i organized five or six sentences from this lecture altogether don't forget about that magic number four to six four five or six sentences that's all you need to spend 60 seconds of the integrated speaking time all right okay if you have any questions about the responses that you just heard in this video 
utilize the comment section to your advantage. And if you would like to reach out to me about my services, please use Facebook Messenger or send me an email. I'll see you guys in the next one, which is going to be focusing on integrated writing. Peace out, guys.